2 Samuel 18. And David numbered the people that were with him, and set captains of thousands and captains of hundreds over them. And David sent forth the people, a third part under the hand of Joab, and a third part under the hand of Abishai the son of Zeruiah, Joab's brother, and a third part under the hand of Ittai the Gittite. And the king said unto the people, I will surely go forth with you myself also. But the people said, Thou shalt not go forth, for if we flee away, they will not care for us, neither if half of us die, will they care for us, but thou art worth ten thousand of us, therefore now it is better that thou be ready to succor us out of the city. And the king said unto them, What seemeth you best I will do? And the king stood by the gate side, and all the people went out by hundreds and by thousands. And the king commanded Joab and Abishai and Ittai, saying, Deal gently for my sake with the young man, even with Absalom. And all the people heard when the king gave all the captains charge concerning Absalom. So the people went out into the field against Israel, and the battle was in the forest of Ephraim. And the people of Israel were smitten there before the servants of David, and there was a great slaughter there that day of twenty thousand men. For the battle was there spread over the face of all the country, and the forest devoured more people that day than the sword devoured. And Absalom chanced to meet the servants of David. And Absalom was riding upon his mule, and the mule went under the thick boughs of a great terebinth, and his head caught hold of the terebinth, and he was taken up between the heaven and the earth, and the mule that was under him went on. And a certain man saw it, and told Joab, and said, Behold, I saw Absalom hanging in a terebinth. And Joab said unto the man that told him, And, Behold, thou sawest it, and why didst thou not smite him there to the ground? And I would have had to give thee ten pieces of silver, and a girdle. And the man said unto Joab, Though I should receive a thousand pieces of silver in my hand, yet would I not put forth my hand against the king's son, for in our hearing the king charged thee and Abishai and Ittai, saying, Beware that none touch the young man Absalom. Otherwise if I had dealt falsely against mine own life and there is no matter hid from the king then thou thyself woldest have stood aloof. Then said Joab, I may not tarry thus with thee. And he took three darts in his hand, and thrust them through the heart of Absalom, while he was yet alive in the midst of the terebinth. And ten young men that bore Joab's armor compassed about and smote Absalom, and slew him. And Joab blew the horn, and the people returned from pursuing after Israel, for Joab held back the people. And they took Absalom, and cast him into the great pit in the forest, and raised over him a very great heap of stones, and all Israel fled every one to his tent. Now Absalom in his lifetime had taken and reared up for himself the pillar, which is in the king's dale, for he said, I have no son to keep my name in remembrance, and he called the pillar after his own name, and it is called Absalom's monument unto this day. Then said Ahimaaz the son of Zadok, Let me now run, and bear the king tidings, how that the Lord hath avenged him of his enemies. And Joab said unto him, Thou shalt not be the bearer of tidings this day, but thou shalt bear tidings another day, but this day thou shalt bear no tidings, for as much as the king's son is dead. Then said Joab to the Cushite, Go tell the king what thou hast seen. And the Cushite bowed down unto Joab, and ran. Then said Ahimaaz the son of Zadok yet again to Joab, But come what may, let me, I pray thee, also run after the Cushite. And Joab said, Wherefore wilt thou run, my son, seeing that thou wilt have no reward for the tidings? But come what may, said he, I will run. And he said unto him, Run. Then Ahimaaz ran by the way of the plain, and overran the Cushite. Now David sat between the two gates, and the watchman went up to the roof of the gate unto the wall, and lifted up his eyes, and looked, and behold a man running alone. And the watchman cried, and told the king, and the king said, If he be alone, there is tidings in his mouth. And he came apace, and drew near. And the watchman saw another man running, and the watchman called unto the porter, and said, Behold another man running alone. And the king said, He also bringeth tidings. And the watchman said, I think the running of the foremost is like the running of Ahimaaz the son of Zadok. And the king said, He is a good man, and cometh with good tidings. And Ahimaaz called, and said unto the king, All is well. And he bowed down before the king with his face to the earth, and said, Blessed be the Lord thy God, who hath delivered up the men that lifted up their hand against my lord the king. And the king said, Is it well with the young man Absalom? And Ahimaaz answered, When Joab sent the king's servant, and me thy servant, I saw a great tumult, but I knew not what it was. And the king said, Turn aside, and stand here. And he turned aside, and stood still. 
And behold, the Cushite came, and the Cushite said, Tidings for my lord the king, for the Lord hath avenged thee this day of all them that rose up against thee. And the king said unto the Cushite, Is it well with the young man Absalom? And the Cushite answered, The enemies of my lord the king and all that rise up against thee to do thee hurt be as that young man is. 19. 1. And the king was much moved, and went up to the chamber over the gate, and wept, and as he went, thus he said, O my son Absalom, my son, my son Absalom. Would I had died for thee, O Absalom, my son, my son. 2 Samuel 19. 19. 2. And it was told Joab, Behold, the king weepeth and mourneth for Absalom. 19. 3. And the victory that day was turned into mourning unto all the people, for the people heard say that day, The king grieveth for his son. 19. 4. And the people got them by stealth that day into the city, as people that are ashamed steal away when they flee in battle. 19. 5. And the king covered his face, and the king cried with a loud voice, O my son Absalom, O Absalom, my son, my son. 19. 6. And Joab came into the house to the king, and said, Thou hast shamed this day the faces of all thy servants, who this day have saved thy life, and the lives of thy sons and of thy daughters, and the lives of thy wives, and the lives of thy concubines. 19. 7. In that thou lovest them that hate thee, and hates them that love thee. For thou hast declared this day, that princes and servants are not unto thee, for this day I perceive, that if Absalom had lived, and all we had died this day, then it had pleased thee well. 19. 8. Now therefore arise, go forth, and speak to the heart of thy servants, for I swear by the Lord, if thou go not forth, there will not tarry a man with thee this night, and that will be worse unto thee than all the evil that hath befallen thee from thy youth until now. 19. 9. Then the king arose, and sat in the gate. And they told unto all the people, saying, Behold, the king doth sit in the gate, and all the people came before the king. Now Israel had fled every man to his tent. 19.10 And all the people were at strife throughout all the tribes of Israel, saying, The king delivered us out of the hand of our enemies, and he saved us out of the hand of the Philistines, and now he is fled out of the land from Absalom. 19.11 And Absalom, whom we anointed over us, is dead in battle. Now, therefore, why speak ye not a word of bringing the king back? 19.12 And King David sent to Zadok and to Abiathar the priests, saying, Speak unto the elders of Judah, saying, Why are ye the last to bring the king back to his house? For the speech of all Israel was come to the king, to bring him to his house. 19.13 Ye are my brethren, ye are my bone and my flesh, wherefore then should ye be the last to bring back the king? 19.14 And say ye to Amasa, Art thou not my bone and my flesh? God do so to me, and more also, if thou be not captain of the host before me continually in the room of Joab. 19.15 And he bowed the heart of all the men of Judah, even as the heart of one man, so that they sent unto the king, Return thou, and all thy servants. 19.16 So the king returned, and came to the Jordan. And Judah came to Gilgal, to go to meet the king, to bring the king over the Jordan. 1917 And Shimei the son of Jera, the Benjamite, who was of Behorim, made haste and came down with the men of Judah to meet King David. 1918 And there were a thousand men of Benjamin with him, and Ziba the servant of the house of Saul, and his fifteen sons and his twenty servants with him. And they rushed into the Jordan before the king. 1919 And the ferryboat passed to and fro to bring over the king's household, and to do what he thought good. And Shimei the son of Jera fell down before the king, when he would go over the Jordan. 1920 And he said unto the king, Let not my lord impute iniquity unto me, neither do thou remember that which thy servant did iniquitously the day that my lord the king went out of Jerusalem, that the king should take it to his heart. 1921 For thy servant doth know that I have sinned, therefore, behold, I am come this day the first of all the house of Joseph to go down to meet my lord the king. 1922, but Abishai the son of Zeruiah answered and said, Shall not Shimei be put to death for this, because he cursed the Lord's anointed? 1923, and David said, What have I to do with you, ye sons of Zeruiah, that ye should this day be adversaries unto me? Shall there any man be put to death this day in Israel? For do not I know that I am this day king over Israel? 1924, and the king said unto Shimei, Thou shalt not die. And the king swore unto him, 1925, And Mephibosheth the son of Saul came down to meet the king, and he had neither dressed his feet, nor trimmed his beard, nor washed his clothes, from the day the king departed until the day he came home in peace. 
1926, And it came to pass, when he was come to Jerusalem to meet the king, that the king said unto him, Wherefore wentest not thou with me, Mephibosheth? 1927, And he answered, My lord, O king, my servant deceived me, for thy servant said, I will saddle me an ass that I may ride thereon, and go with the king, because thy servant is lame. 1928, And he hath slandered thy servant unto my lord the king, but my lord the king is as an angel of God, do therefore what is good in thine eyes. 1929, For all my father's house were deserving of death at the hand of my lord the king, yet didst thou set thy servant among them that did eat at thine own table. What right therefore have I yet? Or why should I cry any more unto the king? 1930, And the king said unto him, Why speakst thou any more of thy matters? I say, Thou and Ziba divide the land. 1931, And Mephibosheth said unto the king, Yea, let him take all, for as much as my lord the king is come in peace unto his own house. 1932, And Barzillai the Gileadite came down from Rogalim, and he passed on to Jordan with the king, to bring him on the way over the Jordan. 1933, Now Barzillai was a very aged man, even fourscore years old, and he had provided the king with sustenance while he lay at Mahanaim, for he was a very great man. 1934, And the king said unto Barzillai, Come thou over with me, and I will sustain thee with me in Jerusalem. 1935, And Barzillai said unto the king, How many are the days of the years of my life that I should go up with the king unto Jerusalem? 1936, I am this day fourscore years old, can I discern between good and bad? Can thy servant taste what I eat or what I drink? Can I hear any more the voice of singing men and singing women? Wherefore then should thy servant be yet a burden unto my lord the king? 1937, Thy servant would but just go over the Jordan with the king, and why should the king recompense at me with such a reward? 1938, Let thy servant, I pray thee, turn back, that I may die in mine own city, by the grave of my father and my mother. But behold thy servant Shimam, let him go over with my lord the king, and do to him what shall seem good unto thee. 1939, And the king answered, Chimam shall go over with me, and I will do to him that which shall seem good unto thee, and whatsoever thou shalt require of me, that will I do for thee. 1940, And all the people went over the Jordan, and the king went over, and the king kissed Barzillai, and blessed him, and he returned unto his own place. 1941, So the king went over to Gilgal, and Chimam went over with him, and all the people of Judah brought the king over, and also half the people of Israel. 1942, And, behold, all the men of Israel came to the king, and said unto the king, Why have our brethren the men of Judah stolen thee away, and brought the king, and his household, over the Jordan, and all David's men with him? 1943, And all the men of Judah answered the men of Israel, Because the king is near of kin to us, wherefore then are ye angry for this matter? Have we eaten at all of the king's cost? Or hath any gift been given us? 1944, And the men of Israel answered the men of Judah, and said, We have ten parts in the king, and we have also more right in David than ye. Why then did ye despise us, that our advice should not be first head in bringing back our king? And the words of the men of Judah were fiercer than the words of the men of Israel. 